All right, here we go again. This is uh, stage two. Uh, thanks for putting up with me as I work the technology. Uh, this hasn't been the smoothest effort at this, but uh, we're going to give her a try here. Let's go back to the slideshow mode. Um, all right, and uh, I do realize that you don't see that as big as I wish you did, so that those names were very clear to you, but I'm just going to keep running with it. So this slide is showing what I'm calling the um, the context for the indigenous name for the mountain, which is to note that the Blackfoot, they would come down from the north from Montana down um, and fought often with the crow on the shoulders of Heart Mountain, uh, the Sheep Eater, the Wind River Shoshone, the Bannock, the Lemmy Shoshone, the Flathead, the Ponderay, uh, these folks would all have used Heart Mountain as a navigating tool uh, coming off the Bighorn Mountains, coming down from the Beartooths. Um, it's, it's had a, a big indigenous presence. So, uh, now we're going to look at another particular cultural landscape for it, which is its crow presence. There we go. Right? Ikapilakshi, or Four Tops Father, are crow names um, for the mountain. Um, and I'll tell you the story about Four Tops Father, where that comes from, shortly. This view is in early winter, and it was especially familiar to the Amitilashi uh, band. And that was uh, the home away from the center band um, of the crow. Um, and I'll explain that name to you in just a minute, too. Another name for the home away from the center band was the Kicked in the Bellies, um, because a colt kicked a member of this band when they first encountered horses. So that gives you a sense of thinking about the Spanish horses coming up and when they first have made their way far enough south to encounter those horses, and they come back with this story, and they're the Kicked in the Bellies band. Um, and when Grant, whose great-grandfather then was part of this band, uh, Grant Bulltail says, when we see Heart Mountain, we know exactly that we are in the heart of Crow Country. We feel safe and comfortable. So for the home away from the center band, Heart Mountain functioned as the sign of being home. So let's have a look at that band. This slide illustrates the Crow territory as it was determined by the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1851. It entails 33 million acres and illustrates how for the um, home away from the center, right there over here underneath the letter R, right, uh, in Cody, um, and over here near Pryor Creek in the Bighorn River, this is where the largest and most centralized band was. So those folks uh, in Grant's great-grandfather's band were the home away from the center. Um, and then this map illustrates what happened due to the euphemistically titled renegotiations that reduced the reservation to less than a tenth from its 33 million acres down to 2.2 million acres. So that largest outside line there recreates the previous slide, right, the 33 million acres. And then you can see by 1868, when Wyoming draws its state line, it removes all the crow to north of that state line. Um, by 1882, a chunk gets taken off. By 1891, another chunk gets taken off. And by 1904, uh, then, in the 20th century, they went through the Allotment Act and the Dawes Act, and as the changes with uh, uh, Indian land policy happened, um, even the 2.2 million acres has a patchwork of property that people uh, managed to buy from tribal members in what can are dubious kinds of uh, economic agreements, let's call them. All right, uh, check my notes. So let's move into the settler names now. Um, 
and this is very interesting, where most of the landmarks uh, of the region lose their indigenous names, uh, Heart Mountain is still Heart Mountain. So, um, in and of itself, it is a victory of indigenous presence that this name survived uh, cartographic reasoning. Um, but as Jace Weaver has identified so clearly among the settlers uh, among this region, um, the English name Heart Mountain has lost any accurate or meaningful relation to tribal presence in the region. There wouldn't, the, I grew up in Cody and I never knew that Heart Mountain um, represented specific tribal knowledge and presence in the region. Um, when Buffalo Bill plotted his new eponymous town, right, it's a town you name after yourself, uh, he laid it out with stunning views of Heart Mountain to the north. But the Crow had been officially removed from the region 20 years prior to the time when Buffalo Bill plots out his town. So the mountain sits squarely amidst a maze of fence lines that demarcate a quilt of private and federal lands. This confusion of land behind fences served for 130 years to prevent tribal members from being on the mountain, right? We all know that feeling, can't cross that fence. And if you don't know which land is BLM land, which land is private property land, you're not going to mess with it, especially if you feel like you would be perceived as a threat and that you might experience violence due to racism against Native Americans. Um, in the 1990s, the Nature Conservancy purchased Heart Mountain Ranch, which includes the peak of the mountain on it. Um, and in their mission to conserve its ecological significance, they opened the mountain to public access as a land trust and allowed day use for hikers, horse riders, and hunters. And they conduct regular field surveys, so they're doing ecological uh, uh, work on the mountain. Um, Day use opens a new but limited vein. If we think about an ecosystem and have needing its circulation and water and blood and those things, um, so it, it the Nature Conservancy opens a new vein um, that allows the crow access to this important mountain. However, it's generally unknown by crow tribal members uh, that this is available. Um, and we filmed uh, a video of a ceremony on it last year that um, um, we're trying to get the word out and to document uh, this process. All right, so here's the fourth name for the mountain. Remember, we're talking about the heterogeneous layers that make up this mountain. The fourth name is Lone Heart Mountain. And that was given to it by the Japanese Americans, who I noted. This was the site right out through here where 10,000 Japanese Americans uh, were relocated. Um, and if any of you are coming up to Cody, I highly recommend you make a stop to their new interpretive center because it's a beautiful little spot. It's about halfway between Cody and Powell. All right. Um, so let's move in to a new kind of heterogeneity, uh, heterogeneity in ceremony. And I'm actually going to stop now. Uh, I have to make sure that these are small enough that they'll post to YouTube without getting stuck. So I'll stop now and we'll cover the ceremony that happened last summer and that will happen again this next summer. Um, so let's see, I have to escape this uh, and stop this.